Greetings, my brethren. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Can we give him a praise this morning? Thank you, Lord. We praise you for who you are. Oh, that's more important there, God, than anything else in the world. Who you are. You do what you do because of who you are. We give you praise because you are worthy of it all today. Give ear to my prayer, O oh God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaints and make a noise. Because of the voice of thine enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they cast iniquity upon me, and in thy wrath they hate me. My heart is so pained within me, and the terror of death are falling upon me. The songwriter asks us, Jeremiah Ramkin, he said, do you fear the gathering clouds of sorrow? If you do, he said, remember to tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He asks another question. Are you anxious? Are you troubled? Of what shall be tomorrow? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He's a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. I am so glad, extremely glad, that we have someone that we can talk, who we can tell everything to. Sometimes you may have a friend and you tell your friend something that you want them to keep and you promise not to tell anybody else and you ask them not to tell anybody else and they promise they will not tell anybody else. But you hear what you said to the friend. And you know what happened? That friend told someone else, even though that friend promised not to tell anyone else. And it goes on and on a chain like that. But God is not like that. Yeah, here's what he does. You know, our Savior, he is at the right hand of God and he is walking, interceding for us. He's our advocate, so he pleads our case. The master. It's like you know someone in the bank and you want a loan and you talk to your buddy in the bank and the buddy go in and talk to the manager and your buddy come back and tell you, hey man, I spoke to the manager. It seems like everything is going to be all right. You feel good. This buddy I'm speaking to you about today is the Lord. Hey, tell it to Jesus. Everything will be all right. I closed last morning by saying to you, when Jesus began his active ministry, he reminded us that he came to reveal the darkness that sin caused, but also to bring light that overcomes the darkness. Jesus Christ is the great light that dispels darkness, and the darkness that is upon man. I shared with you Luke chapter number 2, verse 30 and verse number 32. He says, For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of the people, Israel. Many years ago, before the birth of Christ, Isaiah prophesied in chapter 49 and verse number 6 in the book of Isaiah, he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. And again, in chapter 52 of Isaiah, in verse 10, he says, The Lord had made bare his holy hand in the eyes of all nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our Lord. Let's take a little look at Matthew chapter 4. Verse number 12, the Bible said, Now, when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. One may wonder if John got in prison shortly after he baptized Jesus or during the 40 days of Jesus' fasting, or maybe at the end of the 40 days when Jesus was tested. We learned that it was about a year between the wilderness experience and the events recorded in 
Matthew chapter number 4, verse 12 to verse number 17. Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt at the Caponian, which is upon the east coast in the bar of Zebulon, of Naphtali, and that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, A land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people which sat in darkness saw a great light, and to them which sat in the region, and the shadow of death, light is sprung up. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We find some of these events in John chapter 1, reading from verse number 19 to chapter 4 and verse number 42. Jesus heard that John was in prison. He departed to Galilee. Matthew chapter 4 verse 12. John was taken into custody by Herod the then king. Now one may ask what caused John to be placed in jail? What caused John to be in prison was that Herod had taken his brother, Philip's wife for himself. And John spoke against the wicked act Herod did. Go to chapter 14 of Matthew. And let's look at verse 3. And let's look at verse 4. For Herod had laid hold on John and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife. For John said unto him, It is not lawful for thee to have her. In Luke chapter number 3, verse 19 to 20, But Herod the Tetrarch, being reproved by him for Herodias, his brother, Philip's wife, and for all the evil which Herod had done, verse number 20, added yet this above all, that he shut up John in prison. Because this man of God spoke against wrong, it cost him his freedom. And eventually, it cost him his life. Just like it was then, it is now. Too many are afraid to speak out against evil in high places. But John did, and oh, how it cost him. In these verses, we see Jesus ministering to those in spiritual darkness. He departs to Galilee and brings the light to the people after being there for a while preaching. No doubt, they rejected him. Luke chapter 4, verse number 28, he says, But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way. Look at verse 31. Came down to Caponian of the city of Galilee and taught them on the Sabbath day. He moved and went to Caponian. This was by the sea coast and the border of Zebulun of Natamle. It was prophesied that he would dwell there. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 1 and verse number 2. While he was there, he ministered unto the people. And I remind you, that was his purpose of being there, to minister. He ministered in their synagogues. In Luke chapter 4, verse 31, you will find him ministering there in their synagogues. But there's much for me to say on that. And as I look, my time is up, so I'll pick up next morning right where I stop this day and share with you how he ministered in their synagogues and what are some of the things that he did while he was there. To you who are listening this morning and you are not saved, you are not sure that you're on your way to heaven, you can be today. You can be if you will just believe that Jesus Christ is the one who went to the cross and died for your sins. If you will only confess him with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has risen from the dead, you will be saved. If you confess your sin, if you say, Lord, I'm a sinner, I invite you to come into my heart, forgive me of my sin and save me. If you repent and turn away from your sin, Jesus Christ will save you. And when he comes, if he calls, you will be ready to meet him. Would you ask him to save you today? Dear Lord Jesus, for everyone that will cry out to you, 
I know that you are going to save them. Lord, even before they cry, if they are sincere, you will. For that's the purpose in which you came. Thank you for saving all of us. And for those that need to be saved and crying out to you, thank you for joining them. May they come to you before it's entirely too late. We love you, praise you, and thank you for this privilege of being able to share your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Do have a great day. Don't forget now, share with someone.